All right, this is uh, the logs and exponential test review worksheet number one. Let's we'll start off with number one here. Find the equation of the line tangent to our graph. Well, i equals e to the 2x over x squared at x equals negative 1. And if we want to find the equation of the tangent line, then we need to first find um, the derivative so we can identify the slope. And once we have the slope and the ordered pair, then we can find the tangent line equation. So to find uh, the slope, we first need to get to the derivative. And here we see we have a numerator and denominator portion of our function. So let's go through quotient rule to find the derivative. So to find qu uh, quotient rule, we do f prime g minus f g prime. Now within the f prime, there is a chain rule that needs to be uh, used. So the derivative of e to the 2x is e to the 2x times 2. So that's f prime f prime g minus f times g prime all over g squared. So we found the derivative and then now we can uh, clean this up a little bit. Um, we can make this, uh, we can actually factor out uh, a 2 and an e to the 2x. So uh, we have two separate uh, expressions and from these expressions we can take uh, a common factor of uh, they both share a 2 and they both share e to the 2x. We can factor out a 2x e to the 2x. Sorry, there's also an x that is shared uh, between these two expressions. And once you do that, then uh, the remaining portion is x minus 1. And if we want to double check, we could distribute this through and we should be able to get back to our original problem. So 2x e to the 2x times x gives us uh, 2x squared e to the 2x. That matches. Uh, distribute this through 2x e to the 2x times negative 1 gives me 2x e to the um, 2x. So once we factor this, we can uh, cancel uh, numerator and denominator x value. And then now we, uh, we can find our uh, derivative. So to find the derivative, we simply uh, can um, plug negative 1 into our derivative. So that'll, uh, because we want to evaluate the derivative at a point, so plug negative 1 in. Um, so negative 1 gets plugged in for the x, um, for all the x's. Uh, and then uh, we're left with 2 e to the negative 2 times negative 2 over negative 1 cubed. Uh, the negatives will cancel out. The e squared will come down to the denominator. And the negative 2 and, uh, sorry, the 2 and the 2 will combine to be 4 over e squared. So we have our slope of, our, um, of the graph at negative 1 being 4 over e squared. Um, but we also need the ordered pair. So the ordered pair, we can plug negative 1 back into the original equation. And we get e to the negative 2 over 1, which is 1 over e squared. So we have our ordered pair at negative 1 and um, negative 1, 1 over e squared, our slope of 4 over e squared. So we do point slope, and we get y minus 1 over e squared is equal to 4 over e squared times x plus 1. All right, number two, we have a curve sketching problem. Let our function be defined as f of x equals x squared over e to the x. First, uh, part A says find or state the domain. So domain is basically where the graph exists. Um, uh, numerator uh, can exist anywhere. It's going to be usually the denominator that is, um, could be causing uh, where the graph does not exist. Now e to the x, if we try to set that equal to 0, we see that e to the x is never equal to 0. It's never going to cross the x-axis. So we can say that um, because there's no restrictions in the denominator, no restrictions in the numerator, our domain is all real numbers from negative to positive infinity. Okay, part B, find each relative max and relative min. So if we want to find relative max and relative min, we need to find critical points that come from first derivative. So to do that, we have to find f prime. And once we find f prime, we're going to set f prime equal to 0. And then we solve for x, and we put that on the sign line, and then we test the intervals to determine whether we have relative max or relative min. So uh, I'm going to try and avoid uh, quotient rule. Now, quotient rule will still work, um, but I'm going to try to avoid it here by using product rule. I think it's actually going to end up being probably about the same difficulty. But I'll bring the e to the x up to the top, make it e to the negative x. So now I'm going to go through product rule. So f prime g plus f g prime, because I'm finding the derivative that involves um, two terms that are being multiplied together. 
So f prime, x squared becomes 2x, f prime g plus f, so that's x squared, times g prime, so g prime is e to the u times u prime, so e to the negative x times negative 1, and from here I'm going to factor out the e to the negative x. Once I do that, I have e to the negative x times 2x minus x squared, bring the e to the negative x down to the denominator. So now we can find all the critical points from f prime, and, f, and the, and the uh, critical points can come from both numerator and denominator. But uh, in this case, the denominator won't produce any critical points. There, uh, e to the x was never going to be equal to 0. We set the numerator equal to 0, so that's x equals 0. 2 minus x equals 0, so we get x equals 0. We get x equals 2. So we plot those two points on the sign line. So now we're going to test each interval with the, with the first derivative. So let's plug negative 1 in for x. We get negative times a positive. So negative over a positive is negative. So uh, if I plug in 1, I'll get 1 times, so positive times positive over a positive, which is positive. And if I plug in 3, I'll get 3 times negative 1 over uh, a positive value. So negative over a positive is negative. So I know that the graph is going to be um, falling. I'll reach a minimum at 0, increase, hit a, hit a maximum at 2, and then decrease again. So we know there's a relative minimum at 0, at x equals 0, and a relative maximum at x equals 2. So I'm going to write that statement out. Uh, now the way that we can determine the y values at those points is we plug in uh, the 0 and the 2 back into the original function, okay, back into the x squared over e to the x. So if I plug 0 in for uh, the original function of x, I'll get um, 0 over 1, which is 0. Um, if I plug 2 into the original function, I'll get 2 squared over e squared, so that's 4 over e squared. So I have relative minimum at 0, 0, and the reason is because f prime changes from um, a negative uh, to a positive. So a relative minimum, this should be negative to a positive, not positive to a negative. And relative maximum occurs because f prime changes uh, from a positive slope to a negative slope. All right, so that takes care of part B. Now part C says find uh, the limit as x approaches infinity and find the limit as x approaches negative infinity. And now as x approaches infinity, um, you can look to see that our original function, uh, we can use comparative growth rates because we have polynomial up top and we have an exponential function in the bottom. If I uh, plug infinity in for x, uh, they're both going to go to infinity. However, the, the e to the x, the exponential function, is going to grow at a faster rate than the polynomial. And so e to the x, eventually, once x gets large enough, um, this e to the x is going to overtake the x squared. It's going to increase at a faster rate than x squared. So if the denominator is getting larger than the numerator, then that fraction is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it reaches 0. So limit as x approaches infinity is 0. Now limit as x approaches negative infinity, uh, we can simply plug negative infinity in for x and just see what the behavior of the graph is. So if I plug negative infinity in for x, I'll get negative infinity squared, which is positive infinity. Now the denominator is e to the negative infinity. Now e to the negative infinity, um, we can move that up to the numerator as e to the positive infinity. So we have positive infinity times positive infinity, which is positive infinity. So we know that as x approaches negative infinity, we know the graph is going to rise to positive infinity. Okay, now to find the range, um, we may need to um, look at, uh, see if we can um, figure out what the graph may look like. Uh, so we know that the graph is going to, uh, as, we, as the graph moves to the left, we know it's going to go to negative infinity. Uh, so it's going to be up here. Uh, it's going to fall to uh, a relative minimum of 0. Um, and we know the order pair is actually going to be 0, 0 because we found that from part B. Uh, so hit 0, 0 is going to increase, hit a maximum at 2, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall. However, it's only going to fall, um, it'll always be hovering above 0 because you see that as the graph moves to the right, we see that the limit is going to be 0. So uh, the graph is going to fall, it's going to keep decreasing, but it's going to level out at 0, never reaching the x-axis. So what that means is our relative, our range, our lowest a point 
y value over this entire graph must be at 0, 0, because the graph is falling to the left of 0, and then to the right of 2, the graph is, um, is going to hit an asymptote of 0, never reaching it. So we know uh, the range will be from 0, uh, y of 0, to positive infinity, because we know as, as we follow the graph to the left, it is uh, going up to positive infinity. Okay, so the range is from 0 to infinity. Let's look at part D. Uh, sorry, part E, which is finding, um, asking us to uh, find uh, the point of inflection of each graph. Now, to find the point of inflection, we need to find the critical points from the second derivative. So we have to first get to the second derivative. Okay, if we look at what we have for our first derivative, we're going to go through and find uh, the derivative again using quotient rule. So f prime g minus f g prime all over g squared. So here we have f prime g minus f g prime all over g squared. We can clean this up a little bit, distribute, or actually I'm going to just go ahead and factor out the e to the x, and then combine all the terms, all the like terms that I have inside the parentheses as much as I can. So um, I get x squared minus 4x plus 2. Uh, one of the e to the x will cancel out. So I'm left with um, e to the x in the uh, denominator. Now critical points will be where potential points of inflections are. So it can come from numerator or denominator. Now the denominator e to the x won't produce any zero, so we can leave that alone. The numerator, now if you try to factor this and try to solve for x, uh, we, we see that we're, we can't factor this, right? No two numbers multiplies to be 2 and adds it to be negative 4. So we have to go through a quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Clean this up a little bit, um, and we're going to work our way down to 2 plus root 2 and 2 minus root 2. So those are our critical points. If we put that on a sign line and if we plug in the calculator, we see that the 2 minus root 2 is roughly 0.59. The 2 plus root 2 is roughly 3.4. So if we plug values to the left and to the right of uh, these critical points into our second derivative, we can determine whether the graph is concave up or concave down in each of these regions. So here I'm going to plug in, let's say, a negative 5. And um, this will give me uh, a large negative value here. Um, and um, that will, however, it will always be uh, less than the 5 squared. So we have positive over a positive, which is positive. Here, if I choose 0, 0, um, uh, well, actually, uh, let's, ch let's choose 1, because 1 is between 0.59 and 3.4. If I plug in 1, I get 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative over a positive is negative. So we know this portion is concave down. To the right, we see uh, if I choose a large positive value, I'll get a positive in the numerator, positive in the denominator. So I know this will, portion will be concave up. Notice that there is a change in sign in um, at these critical points. So we know that 2 minus root 2, which is about 0.59, is a point of inflection, and 2 plus root 2, which is about 3.4, is also another point of inflection because of the change in signs that we see on either side of these critical points. So part E, find each POI on the graph of F. Write your answer as ordered pairs. Justify each answer. So POI will exist at 2 minus root 2 and 2 plus root 2 because F double prime changes signs. So to sketch our graph, we can put our uh, combine our sign lines for F double prime and for f prime uh, just to see um, how uh, the behavior or the curvature of the graph matches up in each of the intervals. So the graph is, we know to the left it's going to positive infinity, to the right it's leveling out at zero. We already know there's going to be a, a relative minimum at zero, zero, a relative maximum at um, uh, two, uh, four over e squared. So we just followed uh, the curvature of the graph here. So to the left, it'll be decreasing, um, getting to that relative minimum of 0, maintaining concave up. Concave up between 0 and 2 minus root 2. Um, and the POIs here, I, I plugged uh, the 2 minus root 2 and the 2 plus root 2 back into the original function. So uh, the y value is 0.19 for the first POI and 0.39 for the second POI. So this portion here, Concave up, increasing, hits POI, and then now it's going to keep increasing, but then switch over to concave down curvature, hit a relative maximum, right? 
decrease concave down, so decrease concave down, hit our next POI of 2 plus root 2, and then decrease concave up, and so we decrease concave up. However, it'll the graph will be continuing to decrease, um, heading towards uh, 0 because of limit as x approaches infinity is going to be equal to 0.